know him as your Savior, tonight's your night. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Just join in and let's worship Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. a great God. The Bible says he's greatly to be praised. Thank Hallelujah. You, How many come to worship Jesus? Yes, I tell you, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be back yes, in the is. house of the Lord. And I was just thinking as they sung the song, you know, even as the storms are raging, you know what? He's the rock of ages. 
I tell you, you know, in this in this life, and when you travel through this life, there'll be times of storms, and there'll be times of other times. But I want to tell you something: Jesus is stable. Yes, He is. Jesus is faithful, and Jesus is constant. And you know what? No matter how that storm is, no matter how those winds blow, no matter how how bad it looks, Jesus is still in control. He's still rock yeah. solid. I tell you what, you can give your life to him and you can base your decisions based off his word. How many knows that? Hallelujah. Looking forward to the uh, house of the Lord. Looking forward to what the Spirit's going to do here tonight. Let me invite you right now. Let's just raise our hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. Let's reach out to Jesus tonight. tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for that victory. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity that we have in your house tonight. Thank you for that healing power. God, that protection tonight. God, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. Thank you for blessing this service tonight. Thank you for stirring and inspiring. Oh, mighty God, we welcome the presence of you tonight. Oh, through the precious blood of Jesus, we thank you for that victory. We thank you for that anointing tonight. We give you honor. We give you worship. Oh, we give you Would you just love him tonight? Oh, me. 
Give our King a round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, you can be seated just for a moment. Hallelujah. We'll get ready and take up tonight's offering. Let's give Sister Sheila a hand as she comes to sing tonight. Give her a hand clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just like to thank the Lord tonight. He's awesome. <clears throat> we definitely need him <laughs> every day. You know, I was just thinking the other day that there's not a quiet time. It seems like there's noise everywhere, you know. <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, we just need to get along with the Lord and let him speak to us in that small, still small voice. And I just praise him, Lord, tonight.
Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet once again and let's give Jesus another round of praise. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, help me make welcome our pastor, Brother Keith. Give him a hand. Oh, the Lord's good in here tonight. How many believes that? Come on, let's just give the Lord another shout of praise. Hallelujah. Let the glories roll tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just worship him one more time. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Just turn around and tell somebody, say, good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I want to say it's good to have our visitors for their first time to be with us, Brother Jim and Sister Debbie Burchett, amen, from up around Nancy. Just give them in the Lord a good hand tonight. Give them a solid well, rock welcome tonight. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Amen. How many glad that you're in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Because he's a good God. Amen. Let's sing up one course this song before we change the service tonight. We'll see the bright light shine. It's just about full time. Give him another praise. Lord, We're here to worship him tonight. Amen. Because he's a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. Standing reading of the word tonight. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Philippians, chapter number three. Amen. As the Lord began to deal with me upon this. Amen. Appreciate the good. It's good to see everybody back in church that's been out. I'll miss some if I call the name. So it's good to have everybody back that's been out. And can you pray for those that are out? Amen. By the grace of God. How many of us say God's a good God tonight? Amen. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord. I want to share some things with you tonight that the Lord has shared with me. And, and um, you probably have already heard all these scriptures if you've been in church very long. But I want, I want just, to get, just to challenge you tonight as the Apostle Paul did. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, and 
he's talking about, um, amen, uh, the false prophets here in the chapter 3, the first couple of verses. He's talking about, amen, who he was and what he was, amen, and that you cannot put your faith in your works, but you put them in the faith of Jesus Christ. I mean, believe that. Then your works follow, but, amen, you're not saved by works, you're saved by grace. Amen. And how many knows that God's a good God? And Paul said this in verse number 7, But what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Now listen to this again. Look at this. He said, What things that were gained to me, though I count loss for Christ. Now he said, everything that I have, everything that I am without Christ is absolutely nothing. No matter what you have. Yea, doubtless, I and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. He said, everything that I have, amen, I count it as garbage to the point that when it compares to the Lord. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Look at this tonight, church. If by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already obtained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended, but this one thing. I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. One more verse. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brother Randy, say the prayer. Yes, God. Yes, God. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Amen. Come on, give him a shout. Your purpose and my purpose tonight should be, you can be seated, is to make sure that we win this race. How many believes that we're in a race tonight? Amen. We're in, amen. And friend, when you're in a race, you, amen, look towards the end or the finish. Amen. And our eyes have to stay focused upon the finish tonight. And I want to preach a few minutes tonight by the grace of God and by the mercy of the Lord tonight as Paul began to challenge these Philippian people here. And amen, the challenge was for himself. He said, I've not already got there, but I'm after it. I'm chasing after, amen, and I want to know him. I just don't want to say, amen, that I, I, I met him on the road to Damascus. I want to know him as I've never known him before. I want a relationship with God like I've never had in my life. How many of y'all do not want a relationship in the presence of God tonight? When we look at this, Paul is challenging us also, uh, amen, that we keep moving forward. Everybody shout Amen. Amen. When you, you've got to keep moving forward. There are so many things that wants to pull you to the left. They want to pull you to the right. But we've got to keep our eyes uh, up on him tonight. Amen. Amen. As Paul was saying here, uh, go back to verse 13, Daniel. Uh, amen. Now look at this. Uh, he was saying this. Forgetting uh, those things which are behind uh, and pressing forward uh, to those things which are before. How many knows tonight that we've got one purpose tonight and that's to forget what's behind uh, and reach for what's ahead of us tonight? Now, when I look at this, I want you to understand this tonight. 
Amen. When Paul said forgetting. Now look at this, and I hear a lot of people talking, and uh, amen, and, and they war in their minds so much sometimes that they get weary. But Paul said forgetting, and this word forgetting means to dismiss it from your mind. Do not keep some things on your mind. Because when you keep some things on your mind, it pulls you in that direction. Amen. Sister G and I were going somewhere one day and we were supposed to go one place and I happened to see McDonald's. I got McDonald's. I seen that sign. Amen. And we turned in. She said, where are you going? I said, I don't know. I'm going to McDonald's, I guess. But that's what I had on my mind. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you tonight? Amen. Satan wants you to keep certain things on your mind that you lose the focus of what God is wanting to do. Can I get a witness in here? Now look at this tonight. Amen. The Apostle Paul was so powerful in this. Uh, amen. He said forgetting or dismissing uh, from the mind. And sometimes uh, that is not easy. Uh, but amen, it's, amen, the word forgetting means to stop dwelling uh, on something uh, that is not of God uh, or will not benefit you uh, in your Christian race. Amen. In this race, you should have one purpose and one goal, uh, and that's to win Christ tonight. Amen. And friend, we're not there yet. How many believes that? We've got to keep running, uh, and we've got to keep going uh, until we cross uh, that eternal finish line. Amen. When I look at these scriptures tonight, uh, amen, Paul is saying to you and I, uh, there are so many things that wants to distract us, uh, amen, but I'm a single-minded man, uh, and I got a single-minded mind, uh, and I'm focused uh, upon the, amen, reaching, uh, amen, the prize uh, of the high calling tonight. How many of y'all got to get your mind single tonight? Amen. Go to James chapter 1, verse number 7. James chapter 1 and verse 7. Give God another shout of praise in here, would you? Hallelujah. Listen to this. Go, go back to verse 6. Let's just go back to verse 6. But let him ask in faith, not what? Wavering. Because when you start wavering, you've got a double-minded mind. You have got a mind that does not have a single purpose. You hear what I'm saying to you tonight? Amen. Some people said, I want to get healed. I come up and I get prayer. I believe that God will heal me. Walk up and say, I don't know if the Lord wants to heal me or not. Well, you, you, you just nullified what you believed for. Amen. You have to believe it regardless of how you feel or what the circumstances are. I still believe by his stripes that I am healed tonight or ever what I have need of. Amen. Let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth uh, is like the wave of the sea driven uh, with the wind and is tossed. Uh, you're here one minute, uh, you've got one purpose today, uh, and tomorrow you got something else. One minute you're hollering, Woo, what a service. I found, hallelujah, the victory of God. And the next day you're hollering, hello. You ever been there? Amen. Now watch this. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now Paul is saying, uh, if I'm going to finish this race, I've got to stay single-minded. I've got to take some things in my life and put them aside. I can't dwell on some things and have the victory. How many, ever, how many know what I'm talking about? You can't talk about your past hurt. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind. Amen. All of my successes, uh, everything that I gained in the flesh, uh, everything, uh, amen, that, uh, amen, that my, my failures, uh, my relationships, uh, my temptations, uh, anything, uh, amen, that wants to pull me aside, uh, amen, I refuse to think about it. Uh, I've got to stay single-minded. Uh, I've got to stay focused uh, with an uncompromising determination. I will finish uh, this race. I love that song. I started out to win this race, to serve my Lord and to look upon his face. Then the devil comes a-knocking, trying to show me an easier way. Oh, well, this way's pretty good. I've been on this, amen, I've been, I've been on this for a couple Sundays. Amen, the right way, the wrong way, and the seem way, seem right way. And we've got more people on that seem way, seem right way, and you can imagine. 
It seems okay because it's of the flesh. Amen. But either it's right or it's wrong. Can I get a witness in this house tonight? How many of y'all can understand? We've got to finish this thing. Amen. When we got the foundation of this church laid, I was so excited. Wow, we got something to show. We had the floor. Well, let's just quit. We've got enough. No. I had to see walls go up. That thrilled me to death when I seen walls. But we couldn't stop with just walls. They had to put rafters in. Then they had to put some metal on. Amen. It was starting to take shape. Can y'all hear what I'm saying to you tonight? Amen. This thing with you and I, by the grace of God, here tonight is we can't stop anywhere and say that's good enough. We've got to finish, amen, this race tonight. Somebody shall finish this race. Amen. But look at this double-minded man. Don't let that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Next verse. Amen. Because a double-minded man. You know what it says? Is unstable. Now, I don't know how more, much plainer than James could be than to tell you if you're double-minded, you're not sure what you want to do. You've got to make your mind up. Get your teeth. Get determined in your heart. You're not moving me. I remember the time Sister Pam, I don't know what was going on in her life. It's been many years ago. She stood up one night and said in church, uh, nobody can offend me. Nobody can run me off. Nobody can make me mad. And she made her mind up. And she's still here now. Amen. Because she made her mind up. How many of y'all have got your mind made up? How many of you husbands ever said, she's got her mind made up? <laughs> Hello? You pretty well knew they was useless. Well, that went over good. But still the truth anyhow. Amen. So here's the thing about people today. Now listen to me. A lot of people today, uh, amen, is running on fear like they've never had in their life. They're scared of everything. They're not just scared of corona. They're not just scared. They're scared for everything. You know why? Because they're not settled in the faith of God. That don't mean I don't have temptation. It don't mean I don't battle with fear. It don't mean the devil don't try to come against my mind. But when that does, my mind is done made up. Devil, I'm not looking to the left. I'm not looking to the right. I've got a prize to win. I've got a, amen, come on somebody. Amen. I cannot be double-minded and get anywhere in the things of God. Amen. You cannot be double-minded. This is what this double-minded means. It means undecided, unstable. Uh, it, it means having opposing views at different times. One, as I said a while ago, one day you say, Oh, God, we've got victory. And the next day, I don't know if we're going to make it. Hello? Well, which are you? Some folks don't know if they're a man or a woman. They need to decide. Hello? I mean, uh, we, we got a confusion world today. Amen. But we got, Paul said, I got my eye on the prize. Uh, when I, God began to deal with them, he said, Son, uh, tell my people uh, they've got to stay focused. Uh, they cannot uh, get other opinions, uh, other views. Uh, they've got to take what I said. Uh, keep looking. Uh, keep looking ahead. Uh, stay single minded. Uh, keep, amen, the eternal prize uh, ahead of you. Uh, I'm going to win this race. Uh, amen. I've got too much to gain uh, to lose. Uh, I've come too far to turn back now. How many has tonight? Been through the hot burning deserts. Been through the valleys. Been on the mountaintops. I've been where, amen, that, amen, the pain and the anguish, but I've come too far to look back now. Amen. Amen. Go to Luke 17 there while we're preaching on looking back. Luke 17 and verse 32. Amen. A very familiar text. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, Jesus was preaching there and he said, remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. That's a whole sermon. Remember Lot's wife. Why did we want to remember Lot's wife? He didn't even call her her name, but remember Lot's wife. Because looking back causes you to stumble. It causes you to get unstable. It causes you to start thinking, listen, this bothers me about people sometimes when they talk more about their past life than they do their Christian life. 
Now, amen, you may bring your past up for some reason to be edifying to what God has done for you, but your past life, amen, is not to be talked about. Uh, amen, it's to, amen, it's to be done away with and be ashamed of. Uh, and you've got a new life. Uh, somebody ought to shout yes. Uh, but Lot's wife, uh, she had her heart back there. Uh, she had her affections back there. Everything that she had was back there. That's why she looked back. Paul said you can't look forward and look back. You know, it's amazing. How many of y'all have a car? Y'all won't shout it. Y'all remember what I preached Sunday night? Amen. Remember. Now, how many of y'all got a car? How many of y'all got a windshield about like this? How many of y'all got a rear view mirror about like this? You know what that windshield was put in that car for? It was meant to go forward more than it was to go backwards. That rear view mirror was only to glance in to remember not to go back. <laughs> that windshield has, means to go forward. And friend, if you're not looking forward tonight, you'll start looking back in a little while. How many believes that? You, amen. Somebody will start saying, listen, folks, uh, how many times have you been tried or tempted? Uh, amen. Maybe you got victory over something. Maybe it was gossip. Maybe it was talking about people. Maybe it was, uh, amen, you come out of uh, uh, drugs or alcohol, uh, and a very few days later, one of them people will show up uh, that likes to gossip or likes to do something, uh, amen, to pull you back and get your eyes off of the prize. Amen. <laughs> one time I was sick. I was battling my body, and I got prayer, prayer, and I believed God was healing me. Somebody came to me and said, Brother Keith, I've been having a problem. I didn't, I said, we'll pray about it. They began to describe what their problem was, and he, he, I mean, they read me like a book, and they said, and the doctor said, I'll die with it. <laughs> you know what that, try to get my eyes off of the stripes. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? There really ain't no cure for it. Amen. You won't die suddenly. But amen. You, 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 you're not going to get no better. But I want, I want to confess tonight. I kept looking at the stripes on that back. I, amen. I kept looking to the prize. I, somebody shout Jesus tonight. Is Jesus your prize tonight? Is Jesus your prize tonight? Is Jesus what you after tonight? Are you after him tonight? Amen. Brother Smith was. Amen. We run cross country together. Amen. He was always better than I was. But anyhow. Amen, but I'll brag on him tonight. But I remember my first race where they had trophies. And I wanted a trophy so bad. I think they, go, they give out the first top ten. First, ten. first ten runners come across the line, got a trophy. And I, want, I didn't care if I got number ten, as long as I got a trophy. But man, we begin to run. Man, we was doing good. And I, I, I think the best I can remember, I got sixth place. Well, in the race, somehow somebody done something wrong and we, they disqualified that race. So I went my trophy. The first trophy I'd ever won, I got, we got disqualified the whole, not just myself, but the whole team. They said it had to be run again. I wasn't sure if I could win again. But I learned something that day that, amen, that helped me the rest of my life, rest of my career. <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> huh? And you know what it was? I started running that second time and I started feeling better than I did the first time. And I realized I can win and do better the second time than I did the first time. Can I get a witness in here? I don't care what's happened in your past. I don't care what happened yesterday. You can still win the race tonight. How many believes that? you got to get up. But in that second time, I had another or had another trauma. Man, I was running. I was in third place. And I was on the heels of the guy that was in second place. I know, I'm realizing I'm going to get second place probably if I can just keep this up. The finish line is just up the, uh, just right up there. I can see it. And I look down, 
and start watching how that guy's are running and what his stride is. And when I did, I stumbled. And I fell. I had two more runners while I'm trying to get up to pass me. That would have never passed me if I'd have kept my eye on the prize. Now, friend, I didn't lay down there. As I was going down, I was climbing air, getting back up. But I got sixth place again. When I could have got at least third, that was a sure, maybe second. Do you understand what I'm telling you? If you don't keep, stay focused. How many of y'all focused in here tonight? How many of y'all got focused? Amen. Because there's everything out there knocking on your door. Everything out there knocking. As Sister Sheila said in her testimony tonight, amen, there's a lot of noise going on out there. Amen. And if you ain't careful, you get this on your mind. Amen. And the devil say, yeah, if you go to church, you could get COVID. You could breathe and get COVID. Somebody shout amen. You could go to sleep and get it. I mean, good Lord, if you get your minds on that, amen, next thing you know, you won't be running much. I'm preaching good to somebody in here tonight, amen, or somebody say something to you, amen, it stings a little bit. Maybe they, they didn't mean it, but amen, they said something that just bothered you a bit. Next thing you know, you're thinking more about what she said than what God said. Woo, somebody will shout hallelujah. I'm talking about the victory of an almighty God tonight. Paul said forgetting uh, those things that are behind uh, and looking forward, uh, amen, to the prize. Uh, amen, I want to win Jesus tonight. My purpose uh, is to win the Lord tonight. I've got to keep a focus on him. i got to keep my eyes on him. I, I can't look around. Peter took his eyes off of the Lord and he sunk. Folks, how many of y'all need to be single-minded tonight? Amen. When it comes church time, the devil can't talk you out of it. When, amen. When you need something, don't let the devil talk you out of it. Amen. How many of y'all have had the devil tell you, I right, don't go up and get prayer tonight. Brother Wayne's done prayed for you for that already. <laughs> Hello? I've had the devil tell me, oh, don't sing that song tonight. They don't, they, they're tired of that song. I, I, I love it, so I'm still going to sing it for me. Somebody will shout hallelujah in here. Y'all just get blessed by hearing me. Well, go away. Somebody shout, don't look back. Lot's wife looked back to that former lifestyle. She looked, listen, she was what she was saying. She was testifying that she was making her past her future. See, you can make your past your future if you keep looking back. Do you ever hear people, you call them or talk to them on the phone or see them at church or see them out somewhere, and they say the same thing over and over. And the next time you see them, it's the same thing. And next time you see them, <laughs> everybody smile just a little bit. <laughs> next time you see them, they just got that same old story again. You know why? Amen. They got that on their minds. And that's what they are becoming. Amen. But Paul said this. Somebody shout, amen, keep your eye on the prize tonight. Amen. J James 1 8 says, a double-minded man will not get anything from God. Uh, amen. Hebrews chapter 12 tonight, Daniel. Uh, Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Uh, amen. How many knows that we've got to run, uh, amen, with endurance? Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Anything that's hindering you from running, lay it aside. Anything that's going to cause you to slow down, lay it aside. Anybody hear me tonight? Brother, we've got to stay focused. If we don't stay focused, we won't win this race. Amen. When I met Sister Jean, oh my. When I fell in love with Sister Jean, I stayed focused. Amen. Rowena was the only place in Russell County. It was. Let me rephrase that. It was the only place I wanted to go. Huh? It was the only place that I got happy about thinking about going. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Look at this tonight. Laying aside. Every weight and the sin which just so easily attacks us, that word beset means to attack us, and let us run with what? You ever get weary saying, God, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, and it don't seem like nothing's working. 
God, I believe and I believe, and it doesn't seem like it's coming to pass. If you ain't careful, you'll start slowing down. You'll put other, other weights on. Next thing you know, you're not running like you ran. I love that old song that I believe Carol Robertson had. Hey Amen. What's the matter now, Zion? Amen. What's the matter now? You used to shout, but what's the matter now? You used to praise God, but what's the matter now? You used to talk in tongues, but what's the matter now? Amen. You used to have victory, but what's the matter now? Tell your neighbor, uh, when you get single-minded, uh, prison won't stop you. A lion's den won't stop you. A furnace of fire won't stop you. You got your mind made up. Uh, I'm going through this. Uh, God spoke to me, uh, amen, a few days ago, uh, and he said, son, walk through it. Uh, just keep on walking. Uh, just keep on going. And David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Just keep on walking. I've got to get there. I've got to finish this thing. i got to praise him. i got to love him. i got to stay focused. Somebody shout, stay focused tonight. Come on, shout and stay focused tonight. you got to stay focused, folks, because if Satan gets you emotionally upset, emotionally bitter or un unforgiveness or hurts in your life, you'll get your eyes off the eternal prize. Amen. Don't look back tonight. Look at this. This is what Paul is saying here in Romans or in, the, in Hebrews here. Let's run the race with what? How many of y'all are patient? I got two, three. I got four. I got five. How many of y'all need patience? How many knows the Bible said pray for them? But how many knows how you get patience? That's the bummer. Through tribulations. Through trials. Through things that wants to cause you to throw the wrench across the room. You'll lay it down and say, that's better. That took a lot of Hello? Amen. Sometimes I have, I'm in a hurry. How many of y'all have been in a hurry? I'll tell you this story quite often. Amen. Did the other day, had somebody to pull out in front of me. Amen. They didn't know, they have no place to go, but they had to pull out in front of me. And they did 30 miles an hour, and they're talking to the person in the car with them, and they just had the best conversation in the world, amen, and driving 30 miles an hour, amen, in a 65-mile zone, amen, and I'm trying to, uh, uh, 55, excuse me, 55 zone, amen, and I'm trying to, amen, I, I, I need to go on, and they're talking. Now, I have said, why don't y'all go on? Like to hear me. Come on, y'all. And then sometimes you just got to say, bless them. I've been there too. I've done that too. I've said, I've been there. I pulled out. No thinking about the guy behind me. Y'all hear me? But there's a time that you've got to say, God, I'm going to bear under this. I'm going to bear up under it, and I'm going to keep on running. Because there's a prize to win. And every one of you have got that prize called eternal life. Amen. To win tonight. We cannot get our eyes off of the things of God. Am I preaching to anybody in here tonight? Amen. Somebody shall stay focused. Stay focused. Come on. Amen. Have a single mind. Amen. Have the mind, amen, that's made up that today what your testimony is, tomorrow is still the same testimony. Folks, this is good teaching right now. Amen. If your kids would practice that very principle in the classroom, it changed them, wouldn't it? To have one, learn it. Y'all hear me? And when you learn it, you don't have to worry about it. You know exactly what to do with it. Can I get a witness in this house? Verse number two. Look at this. Look at this tonight, church. Looking for who? See, if you don't keep focusing on the Jesus... We in this race, we've got to run it with patience. And Jesus, the author and the what? Finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? You think that cross was pleasant? You think that cross was a joy? You think he wanted to go to that cross? 
No, but he focused that was his mission in life was to go to that cross. Your mission tonight is to win. Paul said, everything that I ever accomplished, I count but garbage. I got to win him. I got to know him. I got to feel that resurrection. I got to know without a shadow of a doubt when these eyes close that I'll see him again by the grace of God. God, somebody ought to shout hallelujah in here. Amen. You've got to stay focused. You've got to keep your mind on him because there's so many things. Amen. The other day I was doing something, and I don't know where it came from. It popped up on my phone. The Bible is not true. I didn't go into no details of that. I didn't look who sent it, what sent it, what ever had got there because I done experienced it. You can't tell me there's not strawberries because I've done been eating them. Now, sometimes they're not as good as they are others, but they're still strawberries. Y'all hear me? Amen. Some things you can't tell me that's not there because I've done experienced it. Amen. I experienced the power of God. Look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Next verse. Now watch this. Look at this. Amen. For, for consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. You know where you faint at? Right here. I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I can stand another battle. I don't know if this is worth it. I hear people say that sometimes. I don't know if I can make it through this. Hold on to that unchanging hand. Am I preaching to anybody in here tonight? If you don't hold on, you gotta, you got to stay single-minded that Seth Walters is the only man in the whole wide world. Amen. Oh, there's other guys, but not Seth. Well, glory. Amen. And we know there ain't but one Dorinda. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There ain't one but Sister Jean. I mean, I looked over and I thought, oh, God, it's so good to see her sitting there tonight. Oh, God, I missed her. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Look at this tonight. Give her and the Lord a good hand. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. See, there's people tonight that have lost their purpose in serving God. Almost done. They've lost the reason why they got saved. It wasn't just to keep from going to hell. It was to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? It's just more than just, as one preacher said, getting fire insurance. Amen. It's had a relationship with the Lord. It's walking close to God. Can I get a witness one more time in this house? Amen. Look at this tonight as I get ready to close here. Amen. But amen, all these things, either you're looking back or you're going forward tonight. Amen. Either you're going to have a singleness of your mind, and if you don't have that, amen, you're thinking on things that you should stop dwelling on. Amen. Because it will turn you away from the things of God. Amen. As I close tonight, I want you to understand this. Amen. If you don't stay single-minded, you've got to be determined, I'm going to reach that finish line. Amen. I was determined to reach that finish line if I had to crawl across it. Amen. I'm determined tonight, by the grace of God, to finish the race. How many of y'all determined to keep your eyes on God? Amen. They sang that old song, if mama don't go, I got to go on. If daddy don't go, I've got to go on. If husband or wife don't go, I've got to go on. I've got to finish this race. It may not be easy. I may stop along the road and cry a little bit and say, God, I, I hate that they're not making it, but I've got to go on. It's a, I'm, a, I'm out here for myself tonight. Let me get you on the prize. Let me get you on the prize tonight. Let me get you on the prize tonight. Let me get your eye focused upon the prize tonight. Amen. If you got your eye on the prize, amen, you will finish. Amen. Let me give you one more scripture. Amen. I'm going to close. Let me give you one more scripture. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. Almost done. Somebody shout, the purpose is to win Jesus tonight. That's what Paul said. Amen. 
in Ecclesiastes, as he goes to or there, Isaiah 6, in Ecclesiastes, Solomon said many times, he said, let me read it to you. Daniel, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Listen, folks, a lot of people out there tonight are doing a lot of things because their eye has cut off the prize. Look at this. Verse 3. Verse 3. What profit has a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? For one gener generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Now look at this. Look, go down to verse 14. And, and, and here's the thing that, 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 that Solomon was saying most of all. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. That is mentioned all the way through the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, I've seen everything done under the sun that can be done. He had nothing but an earthly goal. All of his achievements were earthly. He left walking with God to accomplish everything that could be done by human man under the sun. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. But listen what he says. He says this I, in verse 16. I, I commune with my own heart saying, Lo, I am come to this great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart has great experiences of wisdom and of knowledge. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive all this is a vexation of spirit. Somebody shout amen. Daniel, go with me one more place. I won't preach this to you. Amen. Verse 11 of chapter 2. Verse 11. Give God a shout of praise, would you? He says this. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. Look at this. And all the labors that I had labored to do. And behold, it was all vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no You know what that word vanity and vexation is? You look it up in the Hebrew, and it means chasing after the wind. You can never get it. If you think you got it, it will go away from you. Verse 17, Daniel. Amen. Look at this. Hallelujah. God is good. Therefore, I hated life because the work... How can you hate life when you got anything and everything and there's nothing that was withheld from you? We look at people and they say, boy, if I had that, I'd be happy. Boy, if I had that, I'd be all right. Ask them if they got it and how they are. <laughs> now, I'm not knocking and thank God they got it, but that does not fulfill you. Therefore, I hated life because the work that is wrought on the sun is what? And for all is It means everything that is, is like chasing after the wind. You get it, but you can't hold it. One more verse, amen, here. And we're going to go back to Isaiah. Amen. How many knows that God is good? Amen. Amen. I, uh, verse 26. This is just in two chapters. You ought to read the whole book of Ecclesiastes and find it out. For God has given to man that is good in the sight of in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he giveth travail to, to gather and to heap up that which may be given to him that is good before God. And this uh, also is what? Now, nothing wrong with what God gives you. But if that's all you have, you don't have anything. Without God in it, it doesn't work. Can I get a witness in the house? Without God, it's not fulfilling. Without God, it's not complete. So I want to make sure I'm running for the right thing. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Amen. As they get ready to come to the music, listen to this tonight. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting on the throne, upon the throne. Folks, Uzziah had reigned for 55 years, and Isaiah had seen the, the peaceful reign of Uzziah. He had seen the things that are, but he died, and he was uncertain of the future. Folks, amen, I'm uncertain of the future, but I know who holds it. Listen, the news, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, 
are all talking. Maybe we're on the looking at a third world war. Could be at any moment in time. You know what that would do to this nation to get involved in a world war today? You hear me? I pray to God. I'm praying that it don't happen. I'm praying it'll escalate. But we're in trouble. And if you root, ain't rooted and grounded in God, you'll fall apart. You'll never see, see, hear so many nervous breakdowns. So many people, amen, with, you think anxiety is running high now? Am I preaching to y'all? You think people are sitting up all night wondering what's going to happen next? Huh? But if you got your eye on the prize, you'll know live or die, I'm a winner either way. How many believes that? He said, when Uzziah died, that king, amen, had died and everything, all his splendor gone. I saw the Lord upon the throne. High and lived, he was still the king. Hallelujah. And his train filled the temple. One more verse. Give God one more shout of praise tonight. He's still God tonight. Amen. Brother, you got to keep your eyes upon God tonight. Stand to your feet. Amen. You got to keep focused on the things of God tonight. Satan doesn't want this. He wants us, amen, to look in every direction. But everybody's Say it, say it with me. I gotta keep my eye on the prize. Hear me. Say it again. I gotta keep my eye on the prize. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Listen to me as I close. Kid I think it is. Folks, we're in an hour right now. You can't look who has it, who don't have it. Who is and who is not. You can't look at who set beside of you, who don't set beside of you. You've got to keep your eye on that prize tonight. And if you don't keep your eye on that prize, Satan will sneak in with something. And you'll be looking at something else and going that direction. Hallelujah. Kid E. Try this. Well, Satan came one morning, spoke to me without a warning. He said, why don't you just quit or compromise? Well, I said, listen, devil, with you I'm going to level. I won't quit. My eye is on the prize. How many feels that way tonight? Let's sing it again. Well, Satan came one morning, spoke to me without a warning. He said, why don't you just quit? Or compromise. A lot of people's doing that. Well, I said, listen, devil, with you I'm going to level. I ain't about to quit. My eye is on the prize. Well, I made my decision. I got me a bigger vision of that heavenly bridegroom in the sky. So Satan, get behind me. to you. Spoke to you without any warning. So why don't you just quit? It ain't worth it. But it's still worth it tonight when you see those nail scarred hands. Shout the crowd! 
tonight. Well, Satan came one morning, spoke to me without a warning. He said, why don't you just quit or compromise? sing it, but I won't be satisfied until I clasp that nail-scarred hand. Won't be satisfied until I hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen, folks. Let me tell you something. I know many of you feeling frustrations and all kinds of things and every power hell bombarding you, but you got to keep your eye on that prize. I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching to every one of us, but somebody here tonight needs that message abundantly. Amen. To keep your eye on that prize tonight. Amen. Well, I made my decision. Well, ain't the second verse yet. What's the second verse? Many times the devil has retreated. He knew he had been defeated. He had lost the battle he realized. Though he's a losing, I'm a still gaining. Through suffering, I'm going to be a reigning. With my king, my eye. I hope y'all go home tonight. And you got to live back on. I got me a bigger vision. 
Jag har jobbat väldigt hårt. Wow! Hela. Play it one more time. Play it. Put your hands together, take it. Well, I made my decision. I got me a bigger vision of that heavenly bridegroom in the sky. for you. One day you're not going to find me, but I found the prize and I'll finish the race. Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise tonight. I don't know about you, but I've had me a good time. How many of y'all had a good time in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Whew. It may be cold outside, but it's pretty good in here. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Let me say this before we dismiss tonight. Amen. Brother Kevin back there made us...